The early part of the 20th century showed Morrison County, and Little Falls in particular, to be a fledgling area with a lot of promise. Many settlers had decided to call this area home, and with the advent of the lumbering industry, it had the potential to become a booming place. In 1890, two very good friends took over the operation of their father's lumbering company. Lumber barons Frederick Weyerhaeuser and Peter Musser had bought much of the surrounding central Minnesota timberland and wanted their sons to be in charge of their company as they moved westward to procure more timberland. The sons, Charles Weyerhaeuser and Richard Drew Musser, settled in and began the hard work of running the lumber operation and mill. In 1898, the young bachelors began building two homes along the Mississippi River, virtually a few yards from each other. The architect hired was Clarence H. Johnston, the most significant architectural figure in Minnesota at that time. They hired Little Falls contractor A.D. Harrison to build the houses simultaneously. Also in 1898, Charles Weyerhaeuser married Maud Moon of Duluth, Minnesota, and in 1903, Drew Musser married Sarah Sally Walker of Cloquet, Minnesota. Both couples settled into a comfortable life in Little Falls. The Musser and Weyerhaeuser families historically played important roles in the social and cultural life of the Little Falls community. As was the tradition of the day, well-to-do families led very different lives than the average person. While they could afford to have cooks, laundresses, and maids, they still felt a true commitment to make their community a better place to live. Maud Moon Weyerhaeuser and Sarah Walker Musser took that responsibility to heart. They not only were founders of many of the early organizations for culture, but also programs meant to benefit families in the Morrison County area. They helped establish the Child Welfare Work for Morrison County, the Civic League of Little Falls, and the local Child Interest Club. Having established these programs, it could be said that in many ways, they were the early social workers of the area. Both women were musically inclined, and so it seemed a natural fit for them to establish a music club. In 1911, Mrs. Weyerhaeuser, herself an accomplished soprano, and Mrs. Musser, along with other well-remembered Little Falls names, established the Musical Art Club. The Musical Art Club bylaws stated, The object of the club shall be to advance the culture of musical art in Little Falls. Member names that you may recognize from the original musical club included Randall, Vasily, LaFond, Simonette, Brennan, Blanchard, Forchi, Tanner, Burton, Rosenmeyer, Martin, Venners, Dewey, and of course, Weyerhaeuser and Musser. The club, which met bi-monthly, was originally established to bring quality cultural music programs to local residents. In the beginning, their focus was on foreign composers and the opera. With 216 members, their first year focused exclusively on music. The population of Little Falls in 1911 was approximately 6,078 people. During 1912, the second year of existence, Jenny Lynn Blanchard proposed adding a literary section to the club, and the group adopted this proposal. The club presented many distinguished, diverse intellectuals and writers. Issues encompassed women's rights, civil rights, science, and psychology. Paul Lawrence Dunbar's work, The Race Question, was featured in an early program. Dunbar was one of the first published African-American poets. In 1913, the president of the Musical Art Club proposed the idea of having a music supervisor in the Little Falls Public Schools. Mrs. L.D. Brown was elected to this position the following year, thus establishing music in the local schools. As the Weyerhaeuser and Musser families grew, the club expanded to include the younger generation. The student section of the club had separate meetings, and many activities were developed for them to participate in. With full staging and costumes, the club held operettas and plays in the lawns of Linden Hill, the high school auditorium, and at the Maud Moon Weyerhaeuser Hall, 
after it was established in 1919. The Musical Art Club was officially incorporated in 1919. In 1919, Mrs. Weyerhaeuser financed the construction of a new performance hall for the club named the Maud Moon Weyerhaeuser Hall on the second floor of the newly completed Morrison County Lumber Company building at 119 First Street Northeast, currently the Kevin Anderson Architect Office. Created by Maud Moon Weyerhaeuser as a gift to the community, along with the gift of a grand piano, the concert hall became the permanent home of the Musical Art Club. Although the hall was gifted to the city in 1919, Maud Moon Weyerhaeuser and her husband Charles continued to pay the bills to maintain it for many years, even after they had moved to Summit Avenue in St. Paul in 1920. In 1924, the Musical Art Club had a membership of over 400. While the club continued to exist for many years, and the next generation of the town's leaders stepped forward to promote culture in the community, its membership waned. After nearly 40 years in existence, the club was dissolved on February 28, 1950. All money from the sale of pianos and fixtures was distributed equally among all denominations of churches in the Little Falls community at that time. Both Maud Moon Weyerhaeuser and Sarah Walker Musser promoted the same philanthropic spirit with their children. The Weyerhaeuser's son Carl, who worked for a short time with his father in the lumber industry, went on to be a writer. Their daughter, Sarah Maud, not only participated in the musical art club in a variety of ways, but also was one of the major benefactors in the creation of Minnesota Public Radio. Both contributed the money to build, furnish, and establish the Charles A. Weyerhaeuser Museum, which houses the Morrison County Historical Society today. The Mussers were often known for contributing to an assortment of art projects. One that they embraced in the 1930s was the making of the movie The Wizard of Oz. Grandpa Peter Musser had been a good friend to author L. Frank Baum, who wrote The Wizard of Oz books. This connection led to a wonderful friendship for Laura Jane with Margaret Hamilton, the actress who played the Wicked Witch of the West in the Wizard of Oz movie. Margaret came to visit Laura Jane many times at Linden Hill. All three of the Musser's daughters participated in a variety of the musical art club's activities, but perhaps Laura Jane embraced its philosophy the most. Sarah and Drew Musser encouraged Laura Jane's passion for music. Laura Jane attended the Juilliard School of Music in New York, graduating with a degree in piano and composition. There she met a great many promising young artists. Laura Jane particularly loved piano, voice, opera, and ballet. After Laura Jane returned to Little Falls from New York and had settled herself in the Weyerhaeuser House at Linden Hill, she became a benefactor for many famous artists, musicians, and local theatrical productions. A patron of education and the arts, Laura Jane sponsored high school scholarship programs and served on the Little Falls School Board. She also served on the State Arts Board and the Minneapolis Symphony Board. Philippa Duke Schuler was a noted American child prodigy and pianist who became famous in the 1930s and 1940s as a result of her talent, mixed-race parentage, and the eccentric methods employed by her mother to bring her up. Laura Jane found her to be a charming performer and helped establish her career. Laura Jane continued to be drawn to controversial topics and artists. The Daughters of the Revolution barred Marian Anderson, a world-class contralto because of her race, from performing at Washington's Constitution Hall. Laura Jane took a particular liking to her fabulous voice and brought her to Little Falls on three different occasions for concerts and once to speak about her work as a United Nations delegate. A world-renowned pianist of special interest to Laura Jane was six-foot-four Texan Van Cliburn. Laura Jane supported his endeavors whenever she had the opportunity, and he visited her at Linden Hill, giving a concert for the people of Little Falls in 1957. Laura Jane held receptions for Van Cliburn that included inviting many of the town's young people so that they could meet and listen to this extraordinary talent. 
In 1958, Van Cliburn went on to win the Tchaikovsky competition in Moscow, something that had never been done by an American pianist before. Van Cliburn and Laura Jane remained friends throughout Laura Jane's lifetime. Laura Jane was a member of several organizations, including the Morrison County Historical Society, the Minnesota Historical Society, and the International Wizard of Oz Club. She was also active in the formation of a museum for the Mille Lacs Band of Ojibwe Indians. In her later years, Laura Jane continued to help finance several beautification projects in the city of Little Falls, including renovations to the Cass Gilbert Depot and the Little Falls Carnegie Library. Laura Jane delighted in helping many young local artists to realize their dreams. She also helped plant the seeds of dreams in the many students that she offered free piano and dance lessons to. While most of her students never became renowned visual or performing artists like Charles Gilbert Kapsner, Marian Anderson or Van Cliburn or Philippa Duke Schuler, she did carry on the legacy that Maud Moon Weyerhaeuser and Sarah Walker Musser and the founding ladies of the Musical Art Club of Little Falls began in 1911. The Weyerhaeusers and Musser's great contribution to the advancement of culture in Little Falls will always be a treasured memory. <laughs>